No Canada, Chapter 3. Who are we? Canada is known around the world as a strong and free country. Canadians are proud of their heritage and identity. Because Canada was a colony of England, Canada has one of the oldest constitutional traditions in the world. This means that a country is governed by a set of rules and values. Governments may change, but they always follow the Constitution. Canada is the only constitutional monarchy in North America. This means that Queen Elizabeth II is our head of state. But Canada is governed by our Constitution. The main goal and highest ideal in Canada is to make laws for peace, order, and good government. Because these words are in bold letters, they're important and they will appear on the Canadian citizenship test. Also remember that Queen Elizabeth II is the head of state, but Canada is governed by the Constitution. This was a key phrase in Canada's original Constitution, which was the British North America Act in 1867. That's important to remember that, that the British North America Act of 1867 was the uh, original constitution that Canada had until 1982. It is also a key phrase in the Constitution Act of 1982, the ideals of peace, order, and good government, combined with freedom, enterprise, hard work, and fair play, have allowed Canadians to build a prosperous society in a rugged country that has a harsh climate. Because Canada is such a big country, it has been called the Great Dominion. To understand what it means to be Canadian, it is important to know about our three founding peoples, Aboriginal, French, and British. Aboriginal peoples. The ancestors of Aboriginal peoples are believed to have come from Asia thousands of years ago. Most experts believe that the first humans to arrive in North America came about 15,000 years ago. It is believed that they crossed from Asia to Alaska using a land bridge that existed at that time. From there, Aboriginal people spe spread throughout North and South America. The first peoples lived in Canada long before the Europeans arrived. Aboriginal cultures were rich and very different from each other. For example, the culture of West Coast peoples was different from the culture of the Aboriginal peoples of the prairies. This is because the natural environment determined how Aboriginal cultures developed. All Aboriginal cultures, however, were based on religious beliefs about their relationship with the Creator, the natural environment, and each other. When Europeans first arrived in Canada, they were mainly interested in trading with the Aboriginal people. The Europeans wanted the furs that the Aboriginals trapped, and the Aboriginals wanted European goods. Later, Europeans wanted Aboriginal land for farms and settlements. As more and more Europeans came to Canada, their relationship with the Aboriginal people was not always peaceful. The French settlers made their own agreements and alliances with the Aboriginals, but after the takeover by the British in 1763, agreements became more formal and were written down. The Royal Proclamation of 1763 established the basis for negotiating treaties and guaranteed territorial rights it stopped the purchase of Aboriginal land by anyone except the British government. No individual of European descent could buy land from an Aboriginal, and no individual Aboriginal could sell land without a meeting of the whole group. 
In return, the aboriginals received benefits such as reserves or hunting grounds, annual payments, and the right to hunt and fish. Sadly, these treaties were not always fully respected, and some were actually obtained illegally. The idea of ownership was often not understood by aboriginals because they did not have written languages, the spoken word was more important to them than the writing on a treaty. Sometimes the aboriginal chiefs signed blank pieces of paper. The original treaties with the aboriginal people were made between the British government and individual groups, but after Canada became its own country in 1867, the federal government became responsible for agreements with the Indians. From the 1800s until 1880s, the, government, the Canadian government had a plan to assimilate aboriginals into the mainstream culture, Canadian culture. Among other things, <clears throat> The Canadian government forced many Aboriginal children to attend residential schools. Some children did attend by choice. Residential schools were boarding schools for Aboriginal children that were often a long distance from their parents and their communities. The hope was that these children would become educated and want to assimilate into the white culture. The children were not allowed to speak their native languages or practice their cultures. The schools were poorly funded and often mismanaged. Sometimes the children were physically or sexually abused. Because the government's policy of assimilation, a lot of damage was done to the Aboriginal people. They fought, forgot many of their old ways. They lost the ability to find food in the traditional way because their traditional hunting and fishing grounds were gone. In many ways, Aboriginal people were broken by government policies. In 2008, the Canadian government formally apologized to the former students of the residential schools and offered money to the students who were still living. Today, the term Aboriginal peoples refers to three separate groups. Indian refers to all Aboriginal people who are not Inuit or Métis. Indian is the old word for some of the Aboriginal people. Most Aboriginal people do not like this term. Today, they want to be called First Nations because they were the first nations to arrive and settle in Canada. About half of all First Nations people live on reserve land. There are about 600 reserve communities in Canada. Some of the reserves are quite wealthy and the people have comfortable lives, but many are very poor. There are problems with poor housing, poorly funded schools, and with drug and alcohol abuse. The other half of First Nations people live off the reserve, mainly in cities. Sometimes they are called natives, but they prefer First Nations. About 65% of Abor Aboriginal people are First Nations. Inuit, old term was Eskimo. This refers to the Aboriginal people who live in the Arctic region of Canada. Inuit means the people. In the Inuktitut language, the Inuit live in small villages across the most northern part of Canada. They have great knowledge of the land, sea, and wildlife of the Arctic region. This knowledge has allowed them to survive in one of the harshest climates on earth. About 4% of Aboriginal people are Inuit. The Métis are a distinct group of people of European and Aboriginal ancestry. The Métis live mainly in the Prairie Provinces, Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba. 
They come from both French and English-speaking backgrounds and speak their own dialect. Michif, about 30% of Aboriginal people are Métis. English and French. The majority of Canadians are of British or French ancestry. English and French are the two official languages of Canada. This means that the federal government must provide services in English and French in government offices across Canada. This applies only to the federal government services, not to provincial or local government services. Today, there are 18 million Anglophones in Canada. These are people who speak English as their first language. There are also 7 million Francophones who speak French as their first language. While the majority of Francophones live in the province of Quebec, 1 million live in Ontario, New Brunswick, and Manitoba. There are also small Francophone communities in other provinces. New Brunswick is the only province that is officially bilingual. The Acadians are the descendants of some of the first French colonists who began to settle on the east coast of Canada in 1604. Their settlement was called Acadia, now Nova Scotia and New Brunswick. Because they were separated from France and the other French settlements in the Quebec area, they developed their own unique culture. In those days, war was common between the French and the English, and when there was fighting in Europe, there was also fighting in the colonies. The English took control of Acadia in 1749, but they allowed the French inhabitants to stay in the region. Between 1755 and 1763, there was another war between Britain and France. The English asked the Acadians to sign an oath of loyalty to Great Britain. The Acadians refused. More than two-thirds of the Acadians, or about 10,000 people, were deported. Some moved back to France, but many went to Louisiana, which was still French, or to nearby settlements in Quebec. This deportation was called the Great Upheaval. It was time of great hardship for the Acadians. After the British defeated France and claimed all the land in Canada, the deportation stopped. Many Acadians returned home, bringing the cultural influences of their adopted areas with them. Most settled in New Brunswick. Today, the Acadian culture is strong and it is a lively part of Canadian culture. Quebecers. Quebecers are the people of Quebec. Most are French-speaking, or Québécois, and they are the descendants of 8,500 French settlers who came to Canada in the 1600s and 1700s. Because they were allowed to keep their way of life when the British gained control of the area in 1763, they have their own unique identity culture, and language. In 2006, the Parliament of Canada recognized that the approximately 6 million Quebecois form a nation within a united Canada. Anglo-Quebecers are English-speaking Quebecers who also have a long history in Quebec. Some Anglo-Quebecers can trace their family histories back to the 1700s. There are about one million English-speaking Quebecers. English Canada. The basic way of life in the English-speaking parts of Canada was brought by hundreds of thousands of settlers from England, Wales, Scotland, and Ireland. 
there were big waves of immigration from Great Britain from the 1600s to the 19